uh, as few steps as possible. Just one. Let's see. Okay. Uh, starts it.
and square it up. Okay. Okay. Uh, rough start today because I wasn't quite prepared, but okay. Um, oh god, I'm a leader. Okay. Uh, so what's going on here? Um, so first of all, how can I modify this code to solve part one and part two? Uh. Let's just make this Uh, so we're given this grid of, uh, I guess, heights, and the idea is that we're going to walk around the grid, starting at S, uh, and we can walk up, right, down, or left, but we can only walk up uh, one height at a time, and heights are denoted by letters. So we can walk from A to either A or B, from B to either A, B, or C, but we can always walk down, but we can't walk up. We can only walk up one at a time. Um, so what I've done is I've just uh, converted the letters to um, this height of elevation. Uh, this is not really necessary because you could just do this on the fly, but this is easy. Uh, and then it's a breath-first search, um, which is a very common important graph algorithm. Uh, so we can think of this as a computer science graph uh, where the vertices are you know, the squares. And the edges are um, up, down, left, or right, assuming that it's actually a valid uh, step. So, like, you know, this is not a valid edge because y is too big compared to r. Um, so, if you imagine sort of drawing out that graph of only valid edges, then the question is what is the cheapest way to get from s, you know, the vertex s to the vertex e? Um, and you can solve this with the DFS. Uh, algorithm which says um, start at E and then figure out everything that you can get to from E in one step and then figure out everything that you can get to from any of those things, right? Anything you can get to, if you already got somewhere in one step, then anything you can get to there in one step is two steps from the start, and anything you can get to a place that's two steps from the start is three steps from the start, and so on. The only thing to keep track of, you know, make sure of is that you don't like backtrack, right? If you see a way to get somewhere you've already been, uh, there's no point, like, trying that out, because you've already been there quicker. Um, and that's actually the nice thing about uh, exploring in this order, right? That's why it's important that you, like, do all the things of distance 1, and then all the things of distance 2, and so on. You don't just uh, follow, like, some path, you know, all the way out to the end. That's called DFS. Um, but that doesn't give you shortest paths, because uh, you want this nice property that if you've been somewhere before, the way that you got there was faster. So that's why it's important to expand out the lowest distance things first, which was actually a bug that I had. That's why I'm using a deck right, with this pop left property. Before I was using pop, and that does uh, DFS. Right, that just expands out like one path first. Um, so yeah, make sure we don't backtrack. Uh, use a, a deck so that the, you know, the first thing that goes into this queue is also the first thing that comes out. Um, and then, you know, if you reach the end, okay, if we put how long it's been, uh, and then just try walking, you know, up, right, down, and left. Uh, and, you know, if the square that we'd watch to is in the grid, and it's got a small enough elevation, then we can walk there. Uh, you know, so consider walking that, you know, to that new square with, you know, 
just add one to our current distance. Um, and in part one, we only start at S, and then in part two, uh, this is maybe not the clearest way to phrase it. Probably a little clearer. Uh, in part two, we can sort of any square of elevation one, that is any of the A squares. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. See you tomorrow.